Heat stroke is becoming more and more of a thing right now because of the increasing temperatures throughout the globe. Just look at former NFL star Marion Barber, who died of heat stroke. And you're going to hear more and more stories of people suffering from heat stroke, which is usually a fatal condition. Most people think that's never going to happen to me, especially if you're young and healthy. But just look at the case of Margaret Bradley. This was back in 2004. She was a 24-year-old medical student. She ran the Boston Marathon in just over three hours in temperatures of 80 degrees plus. And then when they asked her how she did it, she says that she focused on keeping hydrated. But then later that year, during the summer, she goes to the Grand Canyon on a 27-mile hike or run there. And the temperatures there were 105 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Yes, she packed water, about one and a half liters, as well as a couple of snacks. But is that enough? Of course, if you're going hiking, and especially if you're going running, there's always a temptation to carry as little water as possible that you can get away with because it weighs you down. Just one liter is more than two pounds. But in a single hour, the desert heat can cause someone to lose one to two liters of water through sweat. The recommendations for hiking in the peak daylight hours of the Grand Canyon during the summer is to carry one to two liters for each hour that you're on the trail. So that would be eight to 16 pounds of water for a four hour trek. And if you're not replenishing with enough water, dehydration kicks in, then overheating, meaning hyperthermia. At this point, the body's gonna start to divert blood to the parts of the brain that are more basic, which means other parts of the brain will get less blood flow, including the frontal lobe, which is the area of your brain where you make decisions. And then delirium kicks in and you crash to the ground. And if you're at this point of the heat stroke, the outcome is likely to be fatal. Margaret Bradley's death could have been prevented, but again, no one thinks that they're gonna die of heat stroke. But temperatures are climbing all over the globe and you don't have to be in the desert heat to suffer from heat stroke. And just recently, you had this 24 year old UPS driver who died of heat stroke. Thankfully, this UPS driver survived. In the United States, more than 600 people die from complications of extreme heat every year. And with global warming, it's only gonna get worse. So what is heat stroke? The diagnosis of heat stroke can be made when you have three things. One, you're out in the heat. Two, your core body temperature reaches 40.5 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the third thing is that your brain is affected. The scary thing with heat stroke that really blows my mind, besides it often being fatal, is that it can come on so quickly, in some cases less than 15 minutes. There's actually two types of heat stroke. There's the classic heat stroke, which is also known as the non-exertional heat stroke. This is the one that occurs in people who are predisposed to having difficulty regulating their temperature. So who's more likely to have difficulty regulating their temperature? That's gonna be people who are at the extremes of age, either very, very young or very old, or if they have certain medical conditions like heart disease, neurologic disease, psychiatric disease, obesity, and then there's also the use of alcohol, or cocaine, as well as certain prescription medications. Then you have exertional heat stroke, which usually occurs in young, otherwise healthy people who exercise in hot temperatures for too long, typically athletes and those who are in military training. How can you tell if someone's having a heat stroke? Well, besides being hot, heat stroke patients are breathing fast, they have a fast heart rate, and typically a low blood pressure. The brain is affected in some kind of way. It might be something as mild as feeling weak and tired, but there can also be nausea, vomiting, and dizziness. There can be confusion, slurred speech, disorientation, delirium, and if extreme, loss of consciousness, as well as seizures and coma. But typically the first clue that someone's having a heat stroke is that the decision-making starts to be a little bit off. The skin is typically flushed from the cutaneous vasodilation. Most people will have dry skin because they're usually dehydrated, but this is not always the case. Some people can be sweating a lot and they're not always dehydrated when you have a heat stroke. If heat stroke isn't recognized and treated quickly, it's gonna lead to complications. When things get to this point, survival is no guarantee, even if there's appropriate medical treatment. So if someone shows up to the hospital in heat stroke, there's still no guarantee that they survive because the damage might have already been done. For example, massive amounts of fluid and inflammation can flood the lungs. The muscles can start to break down, known as rhabdomyolysis. The muscle breakdown releases protein into the bloodstream that essentially clog up the kidneys, furthering damage to the kidneys. The liver can be affected as well. Now there's certain factors that are associated with a higher likelihood of dying. For example, the degree of temperature elevation, the time to the initiation of cooling measures, and the number of organs that become affected. According to one study, the risk of death significantly increased in those whose kidneys stopped making urine, or if they had coma, or if they had cardiovascular failure. Let's say you come across someone who's suffering from heat stroke. What should you do? Step one, call 911. Step two, stay with them until emergency medical services arrive. 
Step three, move them to a shaded, cooler area if possible. Step four, remove outer clothing. Step five, if they are able to, have them drink cold water or Gatorade or something equivalent and cool them as quickly as possible. Cold water immersion in a pool would be best or an ice bath. Either one of those would be the best, but obviously not always practical. So if you don't have that option, you're gonna to wanna to wet the skin or place cold, wet clothes on the skin. Soak that clothing with cool water. Place cold, wet cloths or ice packs on the head, neck, armpits, and groin. And also you're gonna to wanna to fan them to circulate the air around them to accelerate that cooling process. And here are some tips on how to prevent heat stroke in the first place. For one, you're gonna avoid outdoor activity during the peak hours of the day, so from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Two, drink plenty of cool fluids such as water or sports drinks so you don't feel thirsty. But don't force yourself to drink very large amounts of water in a short amount of time to the point that you feel uncomfortable because this can be harmful. Sometimes people drink too much water without consuming enough salt, which can lead to water intoxication. Now the medical term is called hyponatremia. And when this happens, you can feel very tired and weak, confused, and in extreme cases, experience coma, seizures, and death. Number three is a big one, and that's gonna mean avoiding things that make you lose water from your body. In other words, avoid diuretics. So we're talking about alcohol, caffeine, and certain drugs, certain medications like Lasix or furosemide. Number four is wearing loose, light-fitting clothing. Just don't forget the sunscreen. Number five, wear white colors to help you reflect that sunlight off of you. And number six, if you need to be outdoors, consider getting a cooling vest. So that's gonna be all for this video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to stay cool.